tell us about how Particle is building a near zero cost e-commerce e platform with privacy. Hi guys, very quick introduction. My name's Dr. Kapil Amarasinghe. I'm an emergency medicine doctor, and I'm one of the community ambassadors for the Particle Project, a project that I'm so passionate about that everything I do for this project, I do for free. And by the time of this presentation ends, I think you'll understand why. So, Particle, demonstrating near zero peer-to-peer e-commerce -peer e without requiring your personal data. No sign-ups, no logins. You're never gonna need to give your name. You won't need to give your date of birth. When you use our services, you're only never gonna need to give a shipping address. Let's demonstrate how. What is Particle? Well, Particle, in essence, is a blockchain. We've integrated e-commerce functionality into this blockchain. So unlike traditional cryptocurrencies, where you have to download the blockchain, get the wallet, sync it, and then find vendors who are going to accept it, uh, and find shops that accept it, our shopping services are actually built into our platform. And we've done it in such a way that you can remove all trusted third parties from e-commerce. There are no trusted third parties required with our system. We do not store, we do not require, and we do not record any personal information in order to transact or use our network. And what has me really excited is that this blockchain, it doesn't just support one marketplace. Bearing in mind, it's already live, and we've been running a marketplace that you can download and use on Particle.io since the end of August. But very soon, you're going to be able to build as many marketplaces as you like into this platform, each of them private and fully customizable. So let's move on. Why are we doing this? There is no e-commerce platform that we know of that allows you to transact without giving up your personal information. E-commerce without personal data being given over allows you for greater protection of intellectual property, and it can protect consumers and businesses from data theft. It allows for the masking of manufacturing processes and supply chains, which can provide competitive ad uh, advantages for the big business to business and business to commerce ends of the market. And by removing and automating traditionally human dependent processes, we can remove all of the associated commissions and costs. So how? Right, what's traditional commerce? Well, traditional commerce requires an intermediary. If you're gonna buy and sell goods, you know, internationally between someone, especially very high-end stuff, then you need a trusted third party. And essentially, in essence, it's an escrow. The buyer, the trusted intermediary, the seller. That intermediary, right? We've built an escrow system that only requires two parties, the buyer and the seller. There is no human third party. You're not wasting your time looking for a trusted human third party, someone that is reliable, someone that you know isn't going to scam you, and someone who will usually provide that only at cost. We got rid of that guy. And as a result, we can provide a deep level of privacy because buyer is directly dealing with seller. Furthermore, our native blockchain, and it is a unique blockchain, it uses its own currency token, the PART token. And this is a privacy coin. We've used the Ring CT and C we use the Ring CT technology found in Monero, and we've integrated that into our blockchain. So that all the transactions on our network, the buyer, the seller, and the amounts can be obfuscated from third party analysis. Furthermore, going back to 
What I mentioned before about how you can build an infinite number of marketplaces on this platform, it's a bit like the World Wide Web today. Each marketplace would have its own unique address. And it's only visible to people who possess that address. So if you don't have the view key for that market that you've created, you know, if you don't have the view key for that market that you're looking for, you wouldn't even know it exists on our network. So let's talk you through some of the steps in more detail. I'm going to start with the escrow, because that's actually the fundamental key thing to understanding this. As I said, our escrow system uses only two parties, buyer and seller, unlike the traditional system that always has a third party in between. What we've done is we got rid of that trusted human third party and replaced it with an automated smart contract. So what does this smart contract do, right? You download the market, you download the particle client. It's a bit like Spotify, right? It, you create your own wallet. It connects to the blockchain, or the particle blockchain specifically. And you start seeing listings of things you want to buy. You see something you want to buy, you go, yeah, I like that. I'm going to buy it. So then what happens in our buy flow is you give the shipping address. You put the money down. And then a smart contract's created for that transaction. And into that smart contract, the buyer places a deposit. And that deposit is equal to the purchase price of the goods that they're looking to buy. So they're actually putting twice the cost of the item into that deposit box. Now, the seller, he is going to send you goods. But to protect you, the buyer, from anything he's going to do, the seller has to put money into that deposit box as well. And the amount he's putting in is going to be equal to the sale price of the good he's sending you. Now, you've created that deposit box. Once it's there, buyer can no longer touch the funds. Seller can no longer touch the funds. They're locked. They're trusted. They're trusted by the network. But you know, they're locked. They're secure. No one's going to hack into them and steal those funds. And then the seller ships the goods. He's got the shipping address. And he goes, yeah, there you go. The buyer gets it. It's like, yay, it arrived. And then the buyer says, yeah, I've got the goods. They're in good shape, good condition. Yeah, I received them. I'm happy. So the buyer can then say, yeah, I'm good. Smart contract unlocks. Buyer gets their deposit back. And then the seller not only gets his deposit back, but he also gets that purchase price that the buyer put into the deposit. OK? However, if either the buyer or the seller, you know, if the dispute occurs and resolution cannot be found, then either the buyer or the seller can invoke no resolution. And then that means both deposits are locked forever. OK? Let me explain to you how that works. Joe, he agrees to buy a coffee mug worth $50 from Ben. Joe offers, oh, it's an expensive mug. This is San Francisco. Joe offers $50 for the mug, right? So into the deposit box, he's putting $50 for the cost of the mug, plus a further $50 deposit, because he's the buyer. Ben, who's the seller, he's going to put $50 into that deposit box as well. And then he's going to ship the mug to Joe. If Joe basically gets this, you know, then basically, Joe says, yeah, I received it. And then Joe's basically got the mug, and he'll get the $50 deposit back. And Ben will get $50 from Joe plus his $50 deposit back. Does that make sense so far? I hope so. Otherwise, I'm doing this wrong. If either Joe or Ben do not agree the transaction was successful, then Joe loses $100, and Ben loses $50 plus the mug, assuming Ben sent it. So how this effectively works, I'm actually going to go back so it really makes it clear, is that if Ben the seller is a genuine scammer trying to scam Joe, and he's, 
I'm not sending you the mug, I don't care. Then if Joe invokes no resolution, well, Joe firstly can say, yeah, there's a problem, I've not received the mug. So they can then talk to each other, try to resolve the dispute. Mm, okay, maybe it gets resolved, hopefully. But if it can't, and no resolution's invoked, then in this scenario, the net profit for Ben as a scammer is zero dollars, okay? If Joe the buyer is trying to scam Ben the seller, well, he's gonna wind up having paid $100 for a $50 mug. So in this way, both the buyer and the seller are incentivized to work honestly towards each other to reach resolution. Otherwise, everyone loses. So what's the pros of this? There are no third parties, and therefore there are no commissions. It is automated and trustless. There is no need to verify third party integrity because it doesn't exist, it's not in our system. And therefore we have genuine transaction privacy. What are the cons? Okay, well, both buyer and the seller need to afford the deposits and the collaterals and risk the penalty if lost. And reputation isn't necessarily solved, but we are gonna address this next. But before I jump to that, I just what I wanna say, this is an open source platform. We're having an SDK on our roadmap. I insist you check that roadmap out, because you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed at what we've already done when you play around with our product on our stall, and you'll be amazed when you see our roadmap. But I believe when we get the SDK out, I think there's room for third party insurers and lenders to provide services that integrate and lock into our network to provide those collaterals for a fee. So I don't think this buyer and seller thing is gonna remain a problem forever or for very long. And I think there's room for industry sectors to integrate with us for this reason alone. And as I said, we do address reputation next. So, as I said at present, there is currently one live marketplace on the Particle Network that's been active since the end of August. If you go to our booth today, you'll be able to play around with it. And as I said before, our network can support an infinite number of customizable marketplaces. But currently, it's all enableable, it's doable, because all the backend code is there. We're just building the GUI to do this, and in the next few months, you should see it come out. We dubbed this our storefronts feature. Storefronts allows any user of the Particle Network to create as many marketplaces as they want. This feature will essentially allow one user to create multiple marketplaces and customize their listings and settings, e.g., so that only the creator of that marketplace can create listings for it. And as I said earlier, a marketplace is only visible if the network address is transmitted or shared. Otherwise, the existence is otherwise invisible. I believe that storefronts with a two-party escrow only option effectively underpins our business-to-business -business use case. If I was a manufacturer, let's say I was Mercedes-Benz, I could I have hundreds of supplies. I could set up one-to-one -one pri private you know, markets with these suppliers, and therefore, None of my competitors would know what my supply chain is. None of my suppliers would know who my other suppliers are. You know? And that way, I can segregate and obscure business processes from competitors. And provided that the participants in this marketplace don't disclose the address of each market, then those markets, as I said, they're only known to those people. And even if they leak, Ring CT obscures the buyers, the sellers, and the amounts anyway. So all you really know is that that market exists. When I was at Remtech, the first question I asked is, are people gonna be selling rocket-propelled grenades on this network? And I said, maybe. But thankfully, Particle understood this was a risk. Any listing that's made on any marketplace can potentially be flagged. And if it's flagged, it enters into a globally viewable queue. Now, our network, our blockchain is proof of stake. 
and all of the stakers have a collective responsibility to review these flag listings, and they can collectively vote to have them removed. I believe this globally viewable blacklist is a means through which we can work with regulators and authorities on a nation by nation and international basis to ensure that this network is not abused. Currently, one part is worth one vote. So around 9,000 votes will get a flagged item delisted. But as I said, because we've got on-train governance, so these consensus rules can evolve. Now, you know, I've realized I've got 12 minutes left, and this is unfortunate. So I'm just going to really quickly go through this. There are 9 million part tokens in circulation. Supply inflation is around 2% per annum from June 2020. It's currently 3%. All the purchases on Particle are settled in native part tokens, which is a low supply, low inflation rate blockchain, which incentivizes growth as follows. The proof of stake mechanics essentially ensure a considerable sum of part get locked from circulating supply. So as transaction network velocity increases, what I'm basically saying is, as there are more transactions on the network, the number of escrow contracts goes up. That locks up circulating supply. The number of people staking increases, which further locks up circulating supply. So as more value enters our network due to organic growth and organic usage, diminishing circulating supply, increasing amount of money flowing in, the native value of each part token goes up. And this is great because it encourages vendors and users of Particle to consider, to consider staking at least some of their part. Right? If I'm a seller and I sell an item for 50 part, mm, okay, convert 50 part back into, uh, and 50 part that's currently worth $50. So I convert, sell 25, got $25 fiat, stake 25 part. If the value of part's going up in this model, the total profit I've made is way bigger than I could have with any other network, such as Amazon or Alibaba or you know, eBay. You know, you can't get that. And that's not even, you know, we've not even factored in the fact that there is no commissions on our services. So there are multiple ways for vendors to profit. And that's going to encourage them to get other vendors involved. And that's going to get them to encourage other consumers to get involved through a positive feedback loop, which simultaneously increases the coin and network distribution, the decentralization, and the demand in a non-malicious manner. You know, this creates non-malicious node proliferation, and it creates a community that's incentivized to work together to make this grow. Now, we've got a number of other serious features in place as well. Product import tools so that big sellers can just create CSV files and just put them in, and then suddenly they've got huge marketplaces, so you don't have to create one listing at a time. That's already there. Inventory and quantity management is currently in development. We've got some market promotion tools in development to help bump up visibility on the network. So as I said, if you've got a marketplace that you've created, you, know, you could potentially put fee, pay a small fee, and then it gets transmitted, and then it bumps it up the list, essentially. So there's lots of ways to build tools into this network to make it really, really grow fast. I mean, we even enable atomic swaps, so when we get that functionality more developed, you'll be able to just send cryptocurrencies directly to our client, and they just get converted to part and to other cryptocurrencies. So we've got decentralized exchange functionality built in, but we just need to perfect it. But until we get the truly decentralized form of payments, this is one of the announcements I wanted to make for our community, which is that right now, very soon, in a matter of weeks, I believe I've been told maybe next week, we will have a way of essentially sending Bitcoin directly into our client software. So you like the Spotify client, you download Particle. And when you go to purchase goods, it'll come up with, do you want to buy this in part or do you want to buy it in Bitcoin? And then what will happen is, if you say Bitcoin, it'll give you a little QR code thing with an address to send the Bitcoin to. It goes, the Bitcoin, without you realizing it, gets converted to part. And then that completes the transaction flow. So you will be able to buy goods directly with Bitcoin on our network, but the transactions will be, still be settled in part. We currently have got mobile applications platforms in our roadmap for the Android and iOS, and we're hoping we can have them for the end of next year, as well as an SDK. So what do we need? 
We need your participation. We need your adoption. We need you guys to help raise awareness. We need more developers. We need more advisors. We need more business consultants. We need more representation. We need more ambassadors. We need more advocates. We need more passionate people who are just as passionate about this project as I am because they can see the use cases. My background, again, is in medicine. I see markets in international pharmaceuticals arbitrage. One of the things that I found really interesting, I spoke to a guy, I'm not gonna name the company, but he manufactures medical devices, and he told me back in May in New York, in Consensus, he said, I can't get my medical devices to hospitals in Venezuela because of government corruption. This is gonna allow me to get those medical devices to them. We can use this to overcome corruption. We can use this to help intelligence agencies work together in seamless ways. We can use this in all kinds of ways that are positive and beneficial for world growth that you couldn't even imagine. But right now, we need the liquidity and the infrastructure and the funding to help spread, support, and grow this network. And we need you and your participation and your support. Finally, with that in mind, I'd like to uh, announce our close relationship with Spend.com. Who are Spend.com? They're a family of old school payment processors who have extensive links internationally in the US, in Europe, in Asia, and in Canada. They're coming out with, uh, well, they've teamed up with banking providers to effectively provide credit and debit card facilities that will enable you, within just one credit or debit card, to hold currently up to three fiat currencies and up to 25 cryptocurrencies. And those can be interchanged within that account with near zero cost. This is a Visa credit card, by the way, that they're coming up with. And we have a very close relationship with this company. So much so that they are actively encouraging you and their vendor network to use the Particle project to buy and sell goods online. And they will provide access of it to native part tokens with a native fiat gateway eventually when the liquidity gets there. But in the meantime, they will continue in a staged manner to integrate our technologies into their platform because they have a vision too. They want to be a world financial trading platform. They want to provide a new vision of banking services to the world. They want to give people a new way to interact and integrate into the trading and financial community. They want to make people's lives better in ways you couldn't possibly imagine and understand, but you will. And with that in mind, I want to introduce you to our newest advisor, who unfortunately couldn't be with us today, because I think he's at work, well, he's at WCC. Brian Woods president of Spend.com. He is joining us, and he would like you to join him too in the vision that Particle and Spend.com represent. Thank you. Now, I have exactly four minutes and less for questions before I say anything. We have a booth at the stand. So anything that overruns, feel free to pop down. I'll be there, the Particle stand. It looks very lovely. Find us and talk. Alternatively, go to particle.io. Oh, this is our marketplace. It's a little video loop thing, so you can see what's going on. So you can go to particle.io to find out more, to download this software and play around with it. It's currently desktop-only versions, but I think you'll find it's fun. This is a little demo. And um, yeah, if you want to get hold of the part tokens, you can go to HitBTC, you can go to Bittrex, it's on our website, you know, lots of providers. But more importantly, if you want to connect with us and if you want to help us with the journey that we've got along, come to our booth, come find us. Okay, any questions, guys? Yep. Is 
so yeah, in terms of handling refund policies, um, can that be done natively or does that require, that? it can be done both ways. So going back to this is an open source project, I believe when the SDKs are out, it will make it easier for developers to get involved and build those services natively. Right now, there are companies like Mubis uh, and uh, Den Markets, they, you know, they're, they're developing kind of non-integrated services like that. But yeah, that's possible. Any other questions? All right. Yep. So you can list and sell any sort of goods and services, not just NFTs, but real world physical goods, real world services. Currently you can see, okay, we're selling physical coins on there. But you know, if you browse through our marketplaces, lots of vouchers, I've seen someone advertising a Lambo, I don't think that's real. But you know, yeah, anything. You know, this, this is a platform that allows so much freedom and flexibility, yet provides a means for us to work with the right people to make sure it's not abused, that, you know, no commissions, massive profit multipliers for the people who get involved, even up to the late stage, that help us. Just one thing, I wanna explain to you, and I almost forgot about this, you know, we operate as a non-profit foundation. The Particle Foundation is based in Switzerland. 10% of all staking awards on our network go to an address for them, and that's to help us fund this project. So if you get involved and help us grow this, and if you wanna get involved with the foundation, and that's the way I go about it, if you get involved with the foundation and we grow, you get to be a part of an entity that has already integrated the process of infrastructure scalability and vision into its picture. And I hope you'll be able to see how. I have 40 seconds, yes. Uh, yes, will your network be able to um, have permissions created for it to allow for like, let's say the sale of like commodity or something um, that would maybe require uh, additional verification? I see absolutely why not. As I said, once the, uh, it's an open source platform, when the SDK is out, I think you will be exactly able to build those kinds of services. Think of us, I don't want to rag on some other projects that are currently working out their use cases and yada yada, but a lot of things that you can do on a lot of other platforms can actually be just built into ours. We have a lot of flexibility for this to grow and be more than just a marketplace for regular e-commerce goods. But you have to have the vision to see that. And I respect you for asking that. That was great. Cool. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.